Okay, first, I want y'all to see my shirt before I forget to show it. See it? <laughs> uh, sorry about the mic, y'all. Hold on. Okay. I saw that and had to have it. Hey. <laughs> Hi there, we meet again. Choose here. Welcome to another episode of Eat, Bitch, Eat. Um, today, I have Burger King. And, oh, you hear that? Um, I also have a music moment. And that music moment um, involves a story that I probably told before, uh, but haven't told in a while. Or maybe I haven't told it before. It'll be your first time hearing it today. Um, but first, we're going to talk about um, what I have. I have uh, large onion rings, the chicken. I'm going back to try the chicken again. Uh, the regular, not the spicy. And this is a double Whopper with extra everything. I'm finally getting what I want. Um, I must tell you guys what happened to me really quick. First of all, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, I'm looking for new Chubies always. Uh, if you like this video, if you land on it, um, hit the subscribe button and then hit that notification bell because honestly, a lot of people are not uh, getting notified when I upload. And, you know, I am trying to have a healthy channel. So that would help me a lot if you guys would hit that uh, bell. Okay. Anyway, um, this involves my coworkers. And forgive my voice. Um, I know I have some type of an issue going on with my voice and coughing and stuff like that, but it ain't COVID, just so we know. Um, and if you see the thumbnail, you'll see that I'm gonna try two chips, the Flamin' Hot Cool Ranch and the corn chips. In fact, let me just get that out the way now. One of the good things that happened to me at work, I had wanted this coworker to make me some kind of a coffee flavored cake that she made, um, but it had like nuts in it too, and I forget what it was called, but she finally made me a loaf of it. At least I think that's what it was. I didn't even look. I just, she just said, sorry it took so long to make it. And I assumed that it was this cake that I asked her to make me about two months ago. This is the flaming Hot Cool Ranch. Don't know how to do anything flaming Hot. good. Tastes just like flaming hot. Very faint cool ranch, but you get a lot of the flame and the hot. Okay. To drink, I'm having the raspberry iced tea again, and I'm gonna mix that with some mucho mango. Be quiet, suave boom, if you're watching. I always say that because he gives me a little bit of a hard time mixing several drinks. <laughs> and I always think it's funny. Anyway, so that was one cool thing that happened to me at work. Okay, let's have a bite. People want to see you eat. Mm. Okay. This might be a little better than last time. Ooh. Mm. 
I haven't forgotten. I will try these in a minute. But did I share with you guys how one morning we had a morning huddle and um, they were telling us that we could get hours, extra hours over Easter weekend, which was this past weekend. So that huddle would have been probably Tuesday, Tuesday morning, last Tuesday. And I asked the store manager, I said, you know, um, going forward, will uh, we be getting, will things be getting back to normal where, you know, we'll get our hours back? And she said, you know, within the next couple of weeks, we should see that happening, particularly in May. And I, at the time, I, I, I said, okay, good, because, you know, I'm behind in rent. It's true, um, I am behind in rent, but I knew it would get like a kind of a chuckle out of a few people. And I wasn't trying to like t send anybody any messages or get anybody in, like reason to be in my business. I just said, cause it was the truth. Well, um, there was another thing that happened that I didn't mention to you guys when I told it to you before, because I feel like I told it to you before. Um, the other thing that happened has something to do with what I'm about to tell you now, after I get another bite. One of my coworkers, when the huddle was over, she asked me, when's the next time I work? Not bad. I wish I had ginger ale or seven up or something. Anyway. And I told her, you know, Thursday or whatever, but I don't think she worked that Thursday. Um, so I hadn't worked with her since last Tuesday. Today, you know, I spoke to her and everything when I came in and spoke like speak to everybody. And then I was going about my business and she came to me and she said, I want to give you something. And she had a little envelope in her hand and I said, what, what, what is this? You know, I'll have a, a deep trust of people. <laughs> Mm, you little bitch. Half the bun on my new shirt. Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> Do any of you guys talk to your food? Is your food uncooperative like mine? You know what? I know you think you're going to get away from me, but you're not, you little fucker. I'm going to put you right here. Advertisers, listen. Okay, this had be sometime. I don't have no reason to curse after this. I wasn't trying to curse then. So, please. Okay. I like how I speak thinking I'm speaking directly to the advertisers, okay. Um, so I said, well, what is it? And I kept looking at her kind of quizzically and <sighs> yeah, I, I remember when you said, this is what she says to me. I remember when you said you were getting a little behind in your rent and stuff and I just wanted to give you something. And I sat there looking at her like the, like the look I'm giving you now it was $80. And she said, I wish there was more. And I said, I'm not gonna say her name. I was like, you didn't have to do that. And she said, well, I wanted to, and you know, you don't owe it back or anything like that.
And I said, God, I said myself, I'm not sure what I put out in the universe to um, have received that blessing. I didn't protest it. I looked at it and paused and, and almost, you know, almost cried because I thought that was so generous. And she, we, you know, I, I, I wasn't expecting that. And uh, I hugged her and I thanked her. And I said, this is such a blessing. I, I really appreciate this. I I'm almost I don't know what to say. She said when she, you know, has, when she has, you know, enough or money or whatever, she tries to look out for people. All I could say was thank you. I was not going to block the blessing. I learned a long time ago, don't block the blessing. So, yeah. I had to share that. Um, okay, where are we at? 11 minutes. Those were the two very cool things that happened to me at work. Um, let's talk about the music moment. Okay, and I'm going to tear into the corn chips. I'm going to try them for a little bit and continue to eat the main dish. Again, with the spicy, but this is spicy barbecue. So I guess I can deal with a spicy if it has a little bit of a sweet to it. Of course y'all know, I do have my triple cheese, but I ain't gonna eat those. Huh? Okay. Let's talk about my music moment. There's a story attached to my music moment. Mmm. I'm trying to juice in this. here I bet my food be scared of me <laughs> anyway um, I was probably 11 or 12 listen to the radio thumbing through the dial came across this jazz station and I heard the last minute or two of a song that I found out after I had recorded it you know I would, you know how you used to do back in the day people of a certain age y'all hear me you had your boom box and you press record when you heard something you liked and if you you stuck around to, to hear who the artist was if you didn't know who they were so I heard a track called Birdland by the Manhattan Transfer Now, I think I'd heard of the group before, but again, this is 1981 or 82, and there's no internet. So, you know, they were not a group that you found in many teen music magazines, okay? These were kind of older folk. I had never seen them before naturally because of the song that I heard which I had never heard before and it was so good 
I assumed that they were black. At some point, I found out that I think when I bought when I bought their cassette, the album extensions, which is the album I'm recommending, the album extensions. It came out, excuse me, in 1979. It's jazz, pop, fusion, um, a myriad of different styles on the record. And um, I found out they were white on that album because you had the pictures of them in the back. And I also discovered that they were responsible for the disco version of Twilight Zone called Twilight Tone. Here in the Twilight here in the twilight, twilight tone. Those of you of a certain age, you know the song. They also responsible for a song called Shaker Song that I would hear uh, on some radio stations, jazz radio stations or whatever. If I would turn through the dial and I'd stop and I'd hear that song, but I didn't know who sang it. I found out it was them. So I bought the cassette. Now that album has the distinction of probably, possibly being the very first cassette I ever bought. It's either that album or Donna Summer's self-titled album from 1982, which had the song, I've got my finger on the trigger. One of those two I bought first. Those, they jump-started my cassette collection. For this, just for the sake of argument, Let's just say that it was the Manhattan Transfer, okay? I love four-part harmonies. I love that kind of jazz, like vocal harmony and stuff like that. Um, and these guys were great at it. Um, here's the real, here's the story though. Well, first, let me just tell you that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The key tracks that I'm going to recommend you hear, Birdland, Twilight Tone, and Shaker Song. However, for me, the whole first side is good, but some of you are going to listen to this album and you're going to think, he did that for these guys? Here's the story. And again, some of you might, when I tell this story, some of you might be like, oh, I remember he talked about this. Okay. Um, one weekend, one Saturday, my mom left $20 for my cousin Sheila uh, so she could take her kids to the carnival or to the circus. At that point, I think I was so obsessed with the man transfer that I took that money. Yes, I did. And I bought two or three albums. I think it was three. They were probably like $5.99 because these were older albums, albums that came out before, um, before extensions. Um, and I might have bought Mecca for Moderns, which came out in 81. Like I said, I was probably 11 or 12. That would put me at either 81 or 82. And Boy From New York City was another, was a big top 10 hit of theirs off of the Mecca for Moderns album from 1981. So I, I have a feeling I might've bought that one and two older ones. Went over to my cousin's house uh, who didn't live far and tried to front these new albums off as being a part of my mom's collection that I didn't know anything about. Because I turned him on to the Manhattan Transfer because one of the singers, Cheryl Benteen, had a really high soprano voice and we loved that. So I, oh, 
Tony, I found these in my mom's collection. Now they brand, they brand spanky, got the packaging and everything on them. I was not a good liar. <laughs> Later that afternoon, Sheila either called, I think Sheila calls. I don't know that she came by, but she called. I don't know if she called or came by, I can't remember. But my brother, answered the phone. I'm not at home. I'm at my cousin Tony's house. He calls over there for me, wondering uh, where the money is. And I said, oh, I, don't, I had it with me. Now, why would I take the money? I, it, was, it was safe at home. I don't know what I said. The details are really fuzzy, but I probably said something like, you know, in case I saw Sheila on the street while I was going my way to the store, I wanted to have, I took the money with me in case I saw her so I could already just have it and give it to her so she wouldn't have to come to the house. I probably said something like that, but I don't really know. Anyway, I'm telling my brother, oh, I don't know where it is. I said, you know what? I did go to the store and then I went after I went to Tony's house and I walked under the L track. It probably slipped out of my pocket. And it's somewhere in the L. So my brother and I, and I don't know if my cousin Tony was with, but we were looking for $20 bills that I know was not anywhere underneath the L track. So where we used to live, if you walked northbound on our block, on our street, right at North Avenue and um, Orleans, there's a train station and there's, you can walk under, not a train station, but there are train tracks and you can walk underneath those train tracks to get to Sedgwick Street. And then my cousin lived on Blackhawk, which was just right there on the uh, intersection of uh, Sedgwick. My, we're looking for this $20. And somehow my cousin has the brilliant idea to say, well, where did you go? Well, why don't they, well, you went into the record store, didn't you? Well, why don't you ask the guy, why don't you ask uh, someone there if they saw someone, you know, found $20. And I think my cousin was trying to get me in trouble. I really do. I really think he was, I think he didn't appreciate being lied to about the albums. <laughs> so, we go there to the record store the owner of the place. Mm. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, he was in here this morning. He bought three albums, paid for it with a $20 bill. So, and you can imagine how I must have felt. And I was, I was just quizzed at why my cousin said that. You literally are trying to get me in trouble, dude. <laughs> so, racked with guilt. I threw away a lot of things that I had, a lot of albums that I like acquired or a little 45s tapes where I wrote songs and then recorded them. I told you my cousin and I used to do that. I threw away a lot of those tapes and the corresponding papers that were the songs that I'd written. Um, just out of guilt. My mom didn't whoop me or anything like that because I think she, I think she knew. I think she knew that, that my conscience was tearing me up about it anyway. So, excuse me, 
Oh, I sound like uh, Vera from Living Color. I'm Vera. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I am recommending this album. It was the album that got me. Um, it was kind of the impetus that got me in trouble. Um, it's a great album, despite you know what happened in the aftermath of discovering the album. And this is a long video. Mm. And because I've talked so much, I'm going to end it here. You guys, as always, this is getting a little dry. I thank you. For watching. My final verdict on this King. This is the second time I've had it. I don't think I'll have it again. No, I'll stick with the original chicken sandwich. But I just had to give it one more shot. They always look so good in the uh, in the photos. But no. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too much talking, but I knew I wanted to share this. And I knew that was a story um, kind of behind it. Suck the thumb if you like it. Pull it out your butt if you don't. And I hope to see you guys soon, okay? Take care, y'all. Bye.